I'm here with the two kings of Chrysler Voyagers in Germany, which is a title that should not exist, but it does. Titian and Leander driving a diesel for the very first time. Titian, what's it like? Uh, it's strange. It's strange. Uh, I'm absolutely not to use having a shifter down here, but it's cool because it's a Voyager. That's why it's cool. Look at that. We got a Voyager over here. It looks like a yeah, Grand Voyager over there. Now we're entering the shop. Okay, let's briefly pause so I can warn you about the madness you're about to see. It's an old textile mill with broken windows and pools of stagnant water everywhere that's being used to store Chrysler Voyagers owned by Titian and his brother Leander. Titian is Germany's foremost expert on Chrysler Voyagers. He started Germany's only Chrysler Voyager internet forum. He may be the world's foremost expert on Voyagers. It's absolutely incredible. He's been texting me service manuals and brochures. His passion knows no bounds. It is amazing to me that this American engineered minivan has captured the imagination of this young man in Aachen, Germany. He is an anomaly. Uh, that's just from a friend. I don't know if we can skip that then. No, you have a Chrysler Voyager yeah, in here. Yeah, I mean, they're so too rare in Germany to skip one. That, uh, <laughs> this is a 3.3 liter um, Voyager. It's a European build, so it's not an import. It's built in uh, Austria. Do you only have friends who have Voyagers? No, I know him because he has a Voyager. Oh, that's okay. Yeah, okay, so okay. You meet and somehow you get to know people and then they land here. And in this case, we are doing a head service. Um, Let's have a look here. Oh, yes. A, it's a, he a headless V6. Uh, yes, and this uh, specific vehicle also runs on LPG. So there's the... Oh, that's uh, what this is? Yeah, that's, a, that's part of the LPG system. Hmm. Um, and then that EGS there in the corner is a uh, some yeah. sort of emissions. Device. Right, this is a it's an emissions box. I bought this for three hundred fifty euros. Ho oh, ho! But I have a broken oh. transmission. Oh wait, I mean I could show you there over there. I have a uh, disassembled transmission flying around. There. I mean, of course, I'd love to see yeah. some hardware. Uh, oh, so is it? Does, did he put a backup camera in this thing? Yeah, that is uh, the owner custom built the uh, camera on that. This is a transmission that's still uh, together, and this is a taking apart. This is the pump. A few parts of a transmission. A parts of a you guys really are the Chrysler Voyager kings. There's no so, doubt. Yeah, this is the true messed up stuff from the transmission, and I think what was broken in this transmission. Another brief pause. He's showing us the innards of a Chrysler transmission, and if you look in the background of this frame, you'll see. All these Chrysler parts, like on the shelves and from, coming from from the roof, it's inc it's unreal. Mission was either this, yeah, or maybe this. It was some kind of uh, shaft was was broken, so it would not go into third or uh, yeah. third gear. And we went just to a industrial site near our house uh, and took a forklift and just pulled out the engine, let it drop to the ground took a forklift and lifted the car over the engine. Oh my forklift. god. And then just oh, in one day uh, swapped with other transmission from, I think, yeah. your original transmission. Right. So it, it was years ago, to be fair, so we kind of just, yeah, threw it in, yeah. but it runs. That's, there's a rear axle hanging up from there, yeah, right? Yeah, sure. Yeah, that's not the yes. only one. We have another rear axle and all-wheel drive rear axle behind. Oh, let's four. see the all-wheel drive one. So we have, uh, that's the prop shaft. Yeah. Um, the exhaust system is different. The K-member in the front is different. The fuel tank um, is plastic instead of metal. And here, that's and that's the assembly overrunning clutch and torque tube and uh, rear diff. Wow. And from the rear, we can have a look. There it is. Look at the half shaft. Holy crap. Wow. It's a dead axle with some half shafts that go through the, uh, the hubs. That's cool. Super simple. And then we actually drove this car to Scotland from Aachen House and then back down there. We had no problems at all. Except Damn. for a little bit white smoke, which turns out was, well, it, it's pretty clear that the oh, engine yeah. had a, a gasket leak. No problems at all, but a head gasket. That's how deep these guys are into fixing these things. A head gasket, whatever, it's not a problem. So after that, after uh, I uh, deregistered it again, I started pulling uh, out the engine. This is a 92 Chrysler Voyager. So it's European style. It's imported, but it's for the European market. Mm -hmm. And we believe that this has been a um, Chrysler Voyager competition. 
Um, the competition had BBS wheels. These were the original wheels. We just threw those on to uh, yeah. see how they look. These Damn. were on the original. So they had fender flares, but they took them off. And what's on there now, this is the other part here. Um, from the fender flare. Uh, wait, wait. So, so there's such a thing as a competition? That's like an yeah, official? Yeah, sure. yeah. Is, uh, I can show you a prospect if you want to. Hell yeah. A brochure. It is a Chrysler Voyager any competition. And these parts are from a tuner in Cologne called LSV. Mm -hmm. um, and these were the competition parts. The, the fender flares from the competition were taken off of the vehicle. And the even bigger fl uh, fender flares and uh, whatever you call this was mm -hmm. put onto the vehicle. Titian later sent me... The brochure for this tuning company that he mentioned, RSV or RSW, indeed, they made all sorts of stuff for these American minivans, brush guards and running boards and exhausts and they offered wheels and wings even. It, it's crazy. Which kind of was the death for the vehicle because it rusted under oh. those flares. And, uh, and so yeah. that's why you cut the whole body out? Yeah. And I said, yeah, this is... The shit. This is the absolute coolest Voyager that drives around, although it's short, but that's okay. And then we went there and I looked at the vehicle and I thought, it, it is a disaster. The car is it's a complete disaster. It had the wrong transmission fluid. It was totally rusted. Um, it was just, in, it had no water in the cooler. It was just in a really, really bad shape. Yeah, so we. But you couldn't a, resist. Is, this yeah. is a side where we want to put in. Oh, you have another one, of course. Yes. Yeah, both sides, of course. Right. This is the one we actually want to put in. So, um, this, it was. That's right. There were two pretty much complete entire outer body panels for a Chrysler Voyager just hacked up and sitting in this old textile building. That was uh, where we cut this stuff out. Actually, also was a Chrysler Voyager competition. And this is oh, cool. where the competition fender flares were glued on. So this to you is like the holy grail of Voyagers. Well, the, the competition is definitely very high on the list. I think the holy grail would be um, a brown ability built a wheelchair Chrysler Voyager. Well, actually then it would be a Dodge Caravan or, or whatever because it's made in the US with the air ride system and the uh, ramps automatically. Oh. Which I... Don't need, but that is something very, very cool. <laughs> now, how many people in this world <laughs> would think that that is the holy grail of cars? Oh, I think nobody, I think nobody thinks of that. <laughs> That's awesome. We had a guy, he said, oh yeah, I bought a Crest of Roger. He came into a WhatsApp group and said, hey, cool, this is my vehicle. And we said, that's a competition you got there. You have BBS wheels and all, all of the good stuff. You've got a really, really nice car. It ended up here. <laughs> there was no metal anymore on the strip about this big um, and the metal has to go probably out at least until here and completely to the very front about here at, at, further than here so maybe about here is where the sheet metal has to be um, cut out oh. so sheet metal but it has to come out yeah and um, otherwise it looks okay underneath yeah Definitely. It's, it's not too bad. And usually, this is a thing, usually this would be junk because it's just not worth the, for the work. Yep. But it has Euro 2 and it has the bull by in the front. Right. It has the fender flare stuff and everything is in the papers. So this car is, is going to be epic. Yeah, it's, it's worth to save it because so, it's, so it's let's, worth something. It's special. So this bull bar. Yeah. Is allowed, uh, it was allowed, you used to be able to put this in your German papers and it was fine, yeah. but today you can't do that. And so yeah. if you want a bull bar, you have to find one that already has it, right? Right. right. Or you and just put it on in and... the paper. What he means here is Germany is so strict about every little modification being in the papers. It's got to be accounted for in your registration paperwork. And this particular van has this bull bar that's actually in the papers. And on a, if you were to try to buy this same bull bar and put it on a new Chrysler... The German authorities wouldn't allow it. So this one's kind of grandfathered in. It's a disaster. Because it doesn't look that bad from the top. Yeah, you know, it, it doesn't look bad. But if you get close, you think, hey, what's going on here? Oh. The red interior, it is Oh, it's epic. Fantastic. It's the pre-facelift model. So you have the, the oh. other dash situation. 
And the cool thing about this specific wow, it car... It smells like an old American motel in here. Ah, it's, it's beautiful, isn't it? <laughs> I think that's just mold. But yeah, it smells good. I like yeah, it. Yeah, I mean, it, <laughs> it probably is moldy. Yeah. Uh, but the cool thing about it, it does not have the Bendix 10 anti-lock brake system. It does not have anti-lock at all. Really? Yeah. So you won't have Bendix 10 trouble, which is a, a problem. real problem. So we got the Dodge grill here. Okay, cool, cool. With all four corners, yeah, oh, all four corners are fine. That's a, that's a problem, huh? They, those corners yeah, break? Yeah, they break all the time. Uh, so, yeah, and this one is getting a head service as well. Yeah. Um, oh, yeah. Actually, we got it, we bought it uh, sight unseen for 300 euro. Hell yeah. Had it transported here, and uh, the transporter just threw it off the grass in the back uh, from, the, from the shop. Mm-hmm. And then a friend called me and said, yeah, it's there. And I, I went there and I looked at it and I said, Ugh. Oh, Jesus, you know, it's, it's rough. Um, and this cylinder was uh, completely full with water. Oh, great. Like, when, um, when we pulled the head off, the know, looks... water came pouring out. Yeah, the water came pouring out. But hmm. um, it was a, a proper uh, antifreeze mix. So we didn't have too much, too rust. much rust or corrosion. Um, actually, in fact, the machined heads are laying right here. Okay. And the issue is just the time right now. So somewhere, yeah. mm. even right here, okay. under the racks. Somewhere. Yeah, yeah. Here's a set of machined heads. So this uh, is the build way um, for model year '91 and '92. Um, you have the engine cooler on this side here, and the uh, condenser for the climate stuff is on this side here. What is this? And you also have two different fans for each side. Wow. So um, different. And also transmission cooling. Of right. Course. Yeah. 93, 94, 95 models, they all have the big cooler that goes across. Um, and they also have additional transmission cooler for the water. Oh. Yeah, that's, a, that's another rear, um, rear axle. This is a rear axle. Um, some of the Americans do not have a sway bar on the rear. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Uh, this one does. Uh, I think Plymouth, Somewhere. I think the Plymouth Voyagers, those are the ones I've seen, they do not have a sway bar at the rear. Dodge Caravan or Grand Caravan, I believe they have it. All the Europeans have a, a sway by the rear, so it's quite the mm -hmm. um, Yeah, that's, that's that. Look at this DRB2. <laughs> yeah, that's even rare in the States, I guess, to get. So oh, yeah. It's even rarer to get them in Germany. Do you have a transmission computer also? Uh, yeah. Nee. Oh, sure. That is badass. And then this garbage motor. Uh, yeah, it yeah. runs, but you know. Uh, it would have welded on with the yeah yeah yeah. It's, so it's uh, <laughs> yep. You yeah, break the just, bolt, you got no other choice. I, I mean, you know, the heads are fine, uh, I guess, and yeah, that's about it. You know, <laughs> uh, let's continue because you're driving too fast. <laughs> yeah, that's right. So these engines are just worthless in Germany, huh? People give um, people give them away. Yeah, uh, they. <laughs> It's, it's hard. Some people, they, they have a Voyager sitting in the backyard for parts and stuff, and then they move out of the house, or they move, just, they just move their location, and they say, okay, listen, I have a car sitting here, come, take what you want, it's free. So, yeah, you just drive there, take a transmission, take the engine. You have the drive shaft. Ooh, all-wheel drive drive shaft, right? Yeah, that's an all-wheel drive drive shaft, and this is the all-wheel drive diff. So, I think this is the whole uh, all-wheel drive. Oh, is, it, is this a cradle? Uh, oh, yeah, wow. Yeah, that, yeah. That, that's the um, front K member. It is a specific, well, the K, the, the, this whole thing is specific to um, 3.3 uh, all-wheel drive, 2.5 liter fuel, and diesel. They all have got different ones. And this, in this case, it's the, um, the all-wheel drive one, which only came with 3.3 or 3.8 mm -hmm. uh, engines. And, and, uh, and so, yeah, and it goes through here. The rear output goes through yeah, there, right? Yeah, yeah, you have the... Um, you have the, 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 the PTU. Right. It's somewhere, laying somewhere. It's not that big, you know. It just comes out here. I think it's this right here, isn't it? Oh, yeah. Is it? Oh, yeah, but that's right. Yeah, I'm not going to touch that. Yeah. Um, that's the PTU that goes uh, through there into to the back. Mm -hmm. This is the prop shaft. Um, where they are different in short and grass. Is that a Daewoo Matisse? Yeah. Oh, nice. Yeah. And... It has LPG. Didn't somehow get around to bring it to TÜV and selling it. So because we have to move this engine, they're in the way. Yeah. yeah. To get the car out, so the car just stays there. But that's we, a very unique problem you guys have. And these engines, <laughs> you know, they ain't moving because uh, who needs a 3.2 liter engine? Yeah. And that actually, actually is a Matisse with Irmshaw 
tuning pots. The story behind Titian's love for Christ of Voyagers is a strange one. He comes from a town that has a tradition called Boimshinsetsen, which translates to tree planting. It's a giant party that... <laughs> High schoolers all participate in every year uh, that involves them buying junky cars, driving to a neighboring village, planting trees, and just throwing down, getting lit or turnt or whatever it is the kids say. Um, and so Titian had seen a Voyager uh, back in 2011, he, he guesses, and, and that inspired him and he thought, you know what? Nobody has any money. Um, we should just get a van like that so that seven of us can roll together, together to the party. So he did that for two years. He bought two uh, Voyagers, one for each year. And then third year, he bought this van. That is his before all else. It's his bay van, his, his, his one and only that he's going to keep forever. Check it out. This is the uh, 1994 Chrysler Voyager European version. So th three meters. this is your baby, huh? This is this is yes. the Voyager that basically started it all. Yeah, uh, there were two or three vehicles before this one, and this one was the settling to you know committing. This was committing. The engine was taken from a Chrysler Voyager Enter van, um, and has 100. When I put it in, it had 110,000 kilometers on it and I think now it should be something about 200,000. Uh, I've driven with this specific vehicle 100,000 kilometers. Nice. Tell me about this LPG setup. Uh, okay, so we in the, in the rear of the car uh, is a um, tank uh, with a, a liquefied petroleum gas and it goes through this line li liquefied into this um, <laughs> verdampfer. Um, so what happens here is the, li the, the liquid uh, gas gets evaporated mm -hmm. and um, it is uh, connected to the cooling system because otherwise it would freeze and it would shut itself off eventually. Well, so in, in this case, the cooling system is used as a warming, as a warming system. system. Yeah, oh, okay. keep it so at a it, yeah, right. That's the expanding gas, um, and then you have the uh, g then the, the expanded gas goes with uh, 1.8 to 2.5 bars. It de depends on how you you have it adjusted. Uh, through the filter and through the injectors. Um, the Voyager has a multi-point injection system, so we've got one injector for each uh, um, cylinder. And it goes straight into the intake manifold. Yeah, um, I picked the lowest possible place where I could go in. And you drilled it and, tap and tapped? Yeah, it's drilled and tapped, um, and uh, the, it just doesn't go inside, it goes into the, into the stream and points down. Mm -hmm. So you have theoretically... Oh, okay. Efficiency, but you know, yeah. so it's like a completely parallel fuel, a second yeah. fuel system. Like this, everything two times, two times injector, one for normal fuel, one for the gas uh, mm -hmm. system. And uh, you can two, switch. Yeah, or you can switch. Drive, you can switch. You can switch any time to gas or fuel, and uh, you just keep driving. Uh, this is the computer for the LPG system that does the calculations. Seven years, almost seven years, seven years ago. Yeah. So you got this car. Had no engine. It had an engine. It drove. It oh, also, it drove. I believe it had TÜV, but I don't remember. I think it had to. And why did you get this car? Um, because it was cheap. So you just looked for a car and you liked it and you said, okay, it's cheap. We had two Voyagers before that. Uh, we had a Dodge Grand Caravan and a short uh, Chrysler Voyager. And we thought, okay, those cars are cool. Um, but those were... Your parents had those or you had those? Uh, no, we had them personally and drove to Spain. And uh, the other one was just as a fun car. And then we settled and said, okay, cool car. So now let's look for something more serious. Um, and this was the third one we got, and that's where we settled with this vehicle. So this this has a long wheelbase. It's a Grand Voyager. Yeah. It is Euro two. Yeah, Euro. It's all wheel drive. It's got it all. No, it's not all wheel drive. It's oh, oh, this is the different one. Okay. Yeah, uh, this is not all wheel drive. Which uh, I think for it's me, for personally, for driving on on the autobahn and just around, yeah, I don't need an all wheel drive. System. Right. Yeah. The springs, do they just give you a little bit uh, more payload back here? You yeah, uh, so in the papers you get, I think, 20 kilograms more payload, officially. For this car? For this, for this specific vehicle. Um, but it, uh, you, you, could, you, can, you can put a transmission, you can put an engine, a front axle, a rear axle, and an entire all-wheel drive system into this, and you will not see that the car is completely loaded. So this thing is a workhorse. Yeah. 
Wow. Now this is the town and country, all yep. wheel drive. Town and, think, and country. I think the patina on the sky is great. Oh, it's great. Oh, it's, all wheel drive. Yeah. An all wheel drive town and country. And it has weather. the champagne. Okay. Oh, yeah, it's locked. It has the champagne interior color. And it has the digital dash. Holy. Oh, let's see that dash. Do you have a battery in there? Yeah, yeah, sure. And I it think has, this is drivable. And this is, I think it's fully uh, loaded. It has the infinity sound system. Oh, we got the wood. Uh, yeah. It has the wood grain delete actually, so it does not have the wood grain oh, that the right. TNCs usually have. It has this, uh, yeah, golden strip. Well, stripe. Yeah. Fantastic. So this uh, this is the car of a friend, uh, the same one with the uh, shorty, mm -hmm. um, and uh, it had a completely torn up transmission. So there were the planetary gear sets were torn apart, and there were no teething on the there was no teething on the planetary gear set anymore. It was completely broken. Mm. But it drove a few meters, but it drove. Kind so, of. Let's have a look here. Oh, those gauges! Holy crap, that's epic! Fires up nicely. Yeah. Oh, I love the little chrome there. Mm, yeah, that's nice. And uh, this is sometimes it's illuminated, sometimes it's not. I haven't figured out where that is or where it's not, or if it's just broken. Man, this was a cool van when it was new. Yeah, definitely. And it's going to be cool again. And it also has the um, two, the, the, the... Oh, heating. dual zone. Yeah, 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 the dual zone uh, oh, heating. Oh, 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 it's got a rear uh, uh, vent, huh? Yeah, it's the... Oh, it goes it's, up to the... It's down here. Oh, it's, it's down there. On, uh, it's here and over there in the rear. On nice. the oh, man, look at that. What is that? Uh, that is a Barkas B1000. Of course. Um, that is from the... Ugh. I have to refill the transmission to feel a bit. Yeah, okay, that's cool. Um, that's an old DDR, DD, DDR police car. Okay, so we're now in a parking garage, far away from the other place we were. Um, and there's another vehicle. Looks like you guys are storing multiple vehicles in different places. Definitely, yeah. We, we ran out of space in the shop, so, you know, we gotta rent some stuff and store stuff there. Yeah, this is, um, it's a 1995, I think, Plymouth Grand Voyager with a 3.3 liter engine. Um, and it is, um, it's an imported vehicle, so it's not built in Germany, it's built in uh, the States. Um, it says cross-country Glavelle on the side, by Glavelle. Um, oh yeah, look at that. And it's, yeah, it's in, it's technically it's in a very good shape. How badly do you guys want one of those uh, fold-a-bed things? The Convert-a-bed. Convert-a-bed, yeah. Oh. So the Convert-a-bed is this folding second row bench that turns the back of first and second generation Chrysler Voyagers into a big sleeping area. It's epic, but it's super rare. I have it on a, on a, on a search. So that if one comes up, you're going to... If one come up, uh, I have, I don't have any reception here. <laughs> But no chance in Germany. Yeah, there's a super rare. Oh, look at that freaking TV. Whoa, this thing's epic. Oh, the lighting. You can watch, you can watch some FC Bayern or whatever. You want. Okay, so the final Voyager. This is the final one we're looking at, right? For today, yes. Okay, yeah, so there's another one in this parking garage, and it's a Plymouth. Yeah, so this is a. 200 euro. Right. It's a 94, 95. But this sure. is a US spec? Yeah, so this is a pure US model. We have the US grill, US lights, mm -hmm. um, US oh, rear, uh, the Plymouth ones here, the Plymouth and Town Country, not the Dodge ones. Oh yeah, look at that. Um, the windows are tinted with a the foil. They are not factory tinted. So the second row windows are open on the Grand Voyagers too, huh? Yeah. With the uh, until uh, 95, they also open, yeah. Okay. And, uh, I'm just waiting for time for this one. It's a nice, uh, nice body. Paper. Body looks good. It has no rust. Nice. Absolutely no rust. It's rust free. That's why I bought it because I thought. So in total, how many do you own? Uh, Between you and your brother. And my other colleague, I, me and my brother would be uh, that one, that one, uh, four and a half. Four and, and a half. And together with my uh, with my colleague, with the other ones, uh, eight and a half. Voyagers. Only Voyagers. <laughs> and with the one Dodge Caravan, but yeah, no. Um, and you just think they're cool. That's why. They're fantastic. Fantastic cars. They're cheap. 
Uh, they're easy to maintain, easy to work on, and it's, uh, it's a great car. And if you have the skills, the appeal is you just throw out the second and third row, mm -hmm. and you have the two meter by whatever it is, and you have just a wide open space, and you just can put an air mattress inside, or you can throw a motorcycle inside, you can throw an engine and a transmission inside, you can just put anything inside, you can even with a forklift carefully maneuver a pallet into the car. So it is a very versatile workhorse. It's cheap and it's powerful. Chrysler Voyager, King of Germany, Tizian. <laughs> thank you very much for your time. You're welcome. Thanks for sh letting me drive your van, for showing me all four and a half, or six and a half, or eight and a half. Who the hell knows how many? <laughs> uh, <yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> Using the old Chrysler yeah. diagnostic tool. Let me just point out how random of a place I'm in. <laughs> I'm in an old. Uh, Textile mill, I guess? Textile yeah, plant? Yeah, factory? An old textile factory that's been turned into a garage filled with Chrysler Voyagers in Aachen, Germany. Um, and we're about to do a little... It's dark. <laughs> it's wet. And, um, yeah. We've just been talking about Voyagers pretty much for the last six hours. <laughs> <laughs> there was something magical about this day. You know, I'd spent probably six hours talking with this random young German man who shared my love for Chrysler vans and just weird Chrysler vehicles in general. We went and had dinner kebabs and sat in this old building talking about vans for, for hours. Um, and I told him about my time at Chrysler in Auburn Hills and he taught me all sorts of stuff about these Chrysler vans that I couldn't possibly have known. Um, yeah, it was just kind of... Two, two random strangers who, um, through a shared love of something this weird, just connected. It was, it was kind of magical. Okay, so I'm driving back to Nuremberg from Aachen, and uh, yeah, everything's good. The van is performing really well. Um, I'm auto, on the Autobahn right now. It's smooth. It's quiet. Uh, it is revving at 2,500, which I wish I had a six gear, but okay. Fuel economy seems great. Over 31 miles per gallon. That's phenomenal for a big van like this. Here's my sleeping arrangement. I still have the one of the bucket seats in place back here. Uh, being short has its its advantages. I fit in this van just fine. Anyway, I'm in Aachen right now. I'm returning from the Belgian trip, returning to Nuremberg. I'm going to spend a few days getting the van ready for a longer trip to Italy. Assuming Italy lets me in uh, with their COVID restrictions, we'll find out. Let's check out the parts storage. Two torque converters for the A604 transmission. Yeah. So this is, a, this is a K member with sheet of screws. I gotta fix that. Used engine and transmission mounts. Starter motor. Lower control arm. Yeah, a bunch of CV joints. Just laying around, nothing special here. Oh, a set of heads. A set of heads here in the back. I might actually use those in a few weeks. And we just got some random brake stuff. Oh, this is a high pressure pump from the Bendix 10 ABS system right here. I don't know if that works or not. Gotta find that out. Brake parts, random brake parts, uh, steering racks, uh, all some kind of broken, missing the uh, pressure hoses, and I believe some are also not, um, they are out of spec. Uh, Bendix 4 ABS system, a spoiler for the rear tailgate, well rear tailgate, duh. made by an Austrian tuner specifically for the minivan I'm definitely gonna put that into mine when the time comes for that and this is another alternative front grill it's called a Desert Ox DX500 made in the Netherlands that's for the front grill